Okay, the myths and folklore around pumpkin carving and jack-o'-lanterns are freaking crazy and convoluted! Ow! Let me explain. Pretty much every tall tale around pumpkins and carving them for Halloween has two or more alternative endings. I felt like I was in a choose-your-own-adventure book while researching this. It is absolutely bonkers, but totally fun. It's pumpkin carving madness. Today, on Eccentric Nature. <laughs> and now, pumpkins and Halloween. Okay, I'm gonna try and break this down as clearly as possible. Basically, the whole brouhaha about carving pumpkins and having jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween stems back to a Samhain ritual and stems back to the story of a really big jerkfish named Stingy Jack. Oh, and believe me, he earned that title. The story of Stingy Jack. Jack was a total alcoholic prick from Ireland who was supposed to kick the bucket. So the devil came to collect his soul himself because he is a total manipulative prick and the devil kind of respects that, I guess. Well, apparently Jack was also very suave and persuasive because he convinces the devil to hang out with him and get a drink before he has to go. And in some versions, they get properly sloshed. So it comes time to pay the bill, and Jack is like, Oh man, I totally forgot my wallet. You think you can cover the tab for me, Satan? Please? Oh, oh yeah, how about this? Why don't you turn yourself into a coin, then jump into my pocket, and like, yeah, pay for the drinks with yourself. How this works on the devil, I got no freaking idea. But it does! The devil turns himself into a coin and then jumps into Jack's pocket. The problem is, is that Jack, being a wily jerk-off, has stashed a cross in his pocket. So the devil can't escape. So not only does Jack skip out on his tab and not pay his bill, but he ends up forcing the devil to give him 10 extra years before the devil will come and claim his soul. Now in some versions, Jack only gets one year, and he uses a snazzy silver cross to entrap the devil. Now some of the versions of this story have the devil really being a complete and utter dunce, as he's actually heard of Jack's reputation for being incredibly devious, and goes to see if this is true, and yet still gets tricked. Yeah, that's bad. The devil returns. Okay, part two of the story. The devil returns to claim Jack's soul. And this time, Jerky Jackie is like, yeah, hey devil, I am so ready to come with you, man. I, you know, I'm just a little bit hungry though. You think you could uh, climb that tree over there and get me an apple? Man, that would be so awesome. You're the man. You're the devil. Devil man. The devil does it, and you probably know what's coming. But depending on the source, either this never happened at all, or happened one of two ways. The devil climbs the tree. Really smart there, Beelza dud. And either Jack carves a cross into the tree, or was extremely quick with a hammer and nail because he hammers a cross, or possibly a bunch of crosses, on or around the tree. Now apparently this works because the devil then couldn't climb down the tree, or jump. I guess the crosses act like a super glue? Regardless, Jack barters with the devil again, and gains himself another one or ten years of freedom, or convinces the devil never to take his soul again, which is really important because that comes into play in phase three. Jack dies. Bum, bum, bum. Here we go again with more confusion depending on the source. Either Jack dies from liver disease and drinking too much, or he just up and dies for some unexplained reason. And according to most sources, this happens before his 10 years are even up. So, Jack rightfully goes to hell. And either the devil acts like a petulant child and says, No, 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 you can't come in here. You tricked me, you jerk. Get away from me, Jack. You bad man. Or because of his pact, he tells Jack, Sorry dude, I promise not to let you into hell. So, yeah, man, maybe try God. See how he's feeling. So Jack ascends to the pearly gates, and St. Peter is like, Ha! Are you kidding me? You can't come in here. You've been far too much of a Mr. Meanie Naughty Man. It's heaven, dude. Now this version makes more sense overall, because without the devil making a pact, not allowing Jack into hell, it seems kind of crazy that he wouldn't. And you'd think the devil would be all, Hey Jack, you finally died. Great to see you. 
have I got a great list of tortures planned for you. This is gonna be just tons of fun. For me. <laughs> Prepare to suffer. You know what I mean? So, with nowhere to go, Jack is banished to wander the earth for eternity. One way things pan out according to the folklore is that the devil actually does respect Jack for being a wily trickster like himself. So as Jack's going off into the darkness, the devil hands him, no wait, tosses him, or throws at him an everlasting coal ember from hell to help light his way. Jack then finds a turnip, carves it out, and uses it as a lantern. Starting to sound familiar? Now he does this because either it's his favorite food, or just because it was the easiest item available. It's not terribly clear in most of the versions. Jack in Purgatory. So, pitiful old stingy Jack is doomed to wander the earth. Some say this has its origins from All Saints Day, where Jack symbolizes the Christian souls who are stuck in purgatory, or possibly from the tale of the wandering Jew who taunts Jesus and then is forced to walk the earth until the second coming. As word got round about the legend of Jack, people started calling him Jack of the Lantern, for obvious reasons, which of course was then shortened to Jack-o-lantern. There is a reference in the General Dictionary of Provincialisms, talking about the two meanings for Jack in the Lanthorn. The first equates it to the old legends of the Will-o'-the-Wisp. The second regards the traditional carved turnip. Now people started carving their own turnip lanterns for various reasons. Now some say it was because Jack was still a colossal jerk-off. And as he wandered around, he would have fun luring people into the marshes for the fairies to have their way with them. So people carved turnips and potatoes, and in some cases, even beets, to scare Jack and other evil spirits away. Now some people say they carved lanterns to symbolize the one that Jack carried. Others do it as a means to help guide wayward souls home. And really, it just depends on who is telling the story. Pumpkins for turnips? So how does all this get back to pumpkins? I mean, if you're trying to scare Jack away, stick with the turnip. Those are freaking scary. Well, this is when we move over to America. As the Irish migrated in greater numbers to the US of A, they of course brought their traditions with them. And sure enough, turnips were available. However, they weren't nearly as cheap as pumpkins. And noticing the trend, pumpkin growers started breeding pumpkins to make carving even easier. Now this is all simple deduction, as there's actually no hard evidence as to why people started using pumpkins over turnips. Other cool pumpkin carving connections. Part of Jack-o'-lantern's connection to Halloween is believed to go way back to the Celtic practice of placing their ancestors' skulls on their doorsteps or sometimes on poles during Samhain. They would also place a candle in them as well. In Ireland, they carved pumpkins to represent their patron saint, Bridget of Kildare. There was also an 18th century tradition from Worcestershire, England, using turnips called Hoberty's Lantern, where they also carved faces on them and put candles inside as well. Okay, what's with all the turnips? Let's get back to the pumpkins. Carving pumpkins slowly picked up steam until eventually they became the primary carving item of choice. Oh dear God, stop doing that! And it was finally in the 1960s that John Howden finally created the Howden pumpkin varietal which is still the pumpkin of choice for carving. Political jack-o'-lanterns. There was a time when jack-o'-lantern was used to describe political policies as a deception that will lead to nothing but misery and ruin. The most famous use of this was by Amos Tuck, who is credited with starting the Republican Party in America. He castigated Democrats for their jack-o'-lantern fantasies of little dictators. Solid burn. And now, the completely different version of Stingy Jack. And if all of this isn't enough, yeah, there's a completely different version of this story outlined in the Dublin Penny Journal in 1836. Now in this crazy tale, Jack is still a slimy curmudgeon who nobody likes. But one day, he's struck by a generous whim and decides to help a poor old man who's having trouble on his path. It's an angel. And because Jack helps him out, the angel grants him three wishes. Jack, however, is still a complete and total idiot. For his first wish, he tells the angel he wants anyone who uses his favorite chair to be stuck there until he releases them. Really? That's your wish. Next, anyone who grabs something from his sycamore tree in the front yard will be stuck there until he releases them. And yep, 
The last wish he wastes on his toolbox for the same purpose. Oh my gosh, seriously? You could have had eternal happiness or anything that you want. But no, Jack chooses to stick people to things like flypaper. Now in this version, when it's Jack's time to die, he starts off by sending a demon to come collect him. And the first demon gets stuck in that chair. Then Jack negotiates his extra time. A second demon is sent and gets stuck in the toolbox. Bright demon. More time negotiated. Finally, the devil has had it and comes himself. And Jack gets the devil stuck on the tree. No crosses needed this time. In return for his release, the devil promises no hell for Jack. Jack dies. Aww. And because he was a blithering idiot, wasted his wishes, and spurned a chance for holy redemption, he can't get into heaven. And you know the rest. So, had you heard of Stingy Jack before? Or maybe even another version of this tale? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to learn some more crazy myths and superstitions about plants or herbs, then watch either of these awe-inspiring videos right here. Please, be kind, take care of each other, and have fun carving those pumpkins. Oh, God! Jesus, you just stop it already, it's so freaky!